This is the Dunker. It's where essential, life-saving, underwater escape training takes place. Today, it's the turn of eight Apache pilots. The Dunker is a way of us being able to train military personnel, predominantly air crew, uh, special forces, people who fly often over water at night, what to do in the inevitable crash that might happen. We call it a ditch, but a ditch is a crash on water. But before they get to the Dunker, the day begins in the classroom. Hey guys, so as I said uh, earlier, my name's Dale. I'll be uh, taking you through this bit. So, uh, Time for a refresher session on using STAS, a short-term air supply system designed to give a vital extra minute of air if things go wrong. Advantages, proven lifesaver, has been used in anger, all right? People have used this, it have say, has saved people's lives. It's small and it's compact. We're going to give you a jacket similar to this today. All um, Apache pilots will carry a STAS fitted to their jackets when flying. So it's essential that using them is second nature. The technique was perfect. You got into a good angle. There was enough bubbles. This pool offers the opportunity to master the STAS bottle before moving on to the Dunker. We now have simulators that represent the aircraft that the Navy fly around in, um, and also Army and RAF. And it's so beneficial for people to be confident and understand their surroundings. Because um, sometimes if I was to put you in a, say, a, a different seat from your normal aircraft, you would probably find that, you know, you just struggle because your memory isn't used to what different handles, harnesses, all that sort of stuff. So we try and make it as realistic as possible. So this module is specifically for Apache crew. An Apache has never made an overwater ditching, but for some, the prospect of it is more likely than for others. We're part of a maritime squadron, the only uh, the single maritime squadron in the Apache force, so it's probably more forefront in our minds than perhaps some of the other squadrons, um, and hence why we come and practice this more regularly. What we tend to do when we're teaching them um, is to get yourself ready to go within between five to eight seconds should be your ideal time to get yourself out. Um, the reason we inform students to hold themselves back is if you can imagine in the real world, once that aircraft's going in, there's going to be a lot of, as they say, carnage going on, uh, rotor blades, etc., etc. So it's about holding yourself back, waiting for that to finish, then to make your escape. But roughly here, five to eight seconds, it may go on a fraction longer. The pilots do six dunks altogether, including in the dark and upside down. As soon as you're flipped upside down, your head plays funny tricks on you, um, so disorientation kicks in. Um, we, we're very specific in our drills in that orientation points, points of contact um, have to be there, pointing your eyes in the right direction so that your body follows. Um, and if that drill is done correctly, then you tend to be successful. But if you don't do that drill correctly, if you lose points of contact, um, it's very easy for your mind to start playing tricks on you when you're upside down um, and you tend to start going in the wrong direction and that's when people can get into a bit of trouble. While these pilots have been using the Apache module, there are alternatives that simulate the Merlin and the Wildcat, and there are occasions when there are personnel on the course who can't swim. They obviously make themselves aware beforehand. It's not a prerequisite for them to be able to swim to do the dunker drills. Um, it just means that we have to put other precautions in place, have people poolside with rings to help them to and from. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of apprehension with some of those, uh, with some people. No such problems today though. How was that? Uh, wet, yes, it's probably in a word. Uh, it's always a, a little bit stressful doing the underwater escape trainer particularly those sort of last runs where you're upside down and using the stas bottle, but it's that kind of training that you probably wouldn't want to go and fly over water with the possibility of ditching without. Uh, but yeah, I don't think it's training that anyone looks forward to really, is no, it? No, definitely. Yeah. It's that first breath, uh, it breathfulness. You're always a bit tentative because you've always got a bit of water left over. So It's just remembering the actions they've taught you in the brief beforehand uh, and being clear in your mind as to what you're going to do. And uh, yeah, I'd say it's always, it's always stressful, but it's good to have it done. Claire Sadler, Forces News at RNAS Yeovilton. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.